Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Jesus knows the way. Jesus don't know the way. Jesus said, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I want to teach a sermon entitled very quickly. I'm going to condense all of it and then give you everything I promise. The harvest isn't the problem. The harvest isn't the problem. I was going to give Ebonics to say the harvest ain't the problem. But I know some people are educated in this. But the, the harvest isn't the problem. Just what, what's, a, what's a pet peeve of yours? What's a pet peeve of yours? People. Being dishonest. Here we go. No, what about you? What's a pet peeve of yours? And not just people just be anything. Anything, anything. Uh, chew with your mouth open, smack it, get my wife hanging out the door. What's your pet peeve? What's your pet peeve? The bird, what's your pet peeve? Because you always mad. What's your pet peeve? That's what he said, because he always said, he said, I'm, he said, I'm mad. He always said that. Go ahead. Everything, everything is a pet peeve for him. Okay. Everything's a pet peeve. Real go by say, what's your pet peeve? I ain't asking you to prophesy. I'm saying what bothers you.
truly believe that my problem, what makes me, what makes me angry, what makes me frustrated, is that people still don't see the church as a place of healing. What frustrates me is that people are walking around broken, they're walking around busted, they're walking around feeling as if God doesn't love them, and the grace of God has already been committed for them. There's nothing more frustrating than seeing a high school student, seeing a middle school student full of potential, full of anointing, full of gifting, full of the call of God, but they have nobody to love them. There is nothing more frustrating, there is nothing more frustrating than people walking around as believers, not knowing what belongs to them in Jesus. Nothing more frustrating. Nothing more frustrating. There is nothing more frustrating to me than an uninformed Christian. That you have rights to a covenant that has put you in right relationship with Jesus, yet you walk around in condemnation. An uninformed Christian is the easiest Christian for the enemy to attack. You can be up, slap my boss on the shoulder. You can be under covenant and not know the covenant. Just like you can be in the contract and not know the terms of the contract. And I believe one of the reasons why God raised this church up, it wasn't me who raised it up, it was God who raised this church up because, listen to me very clearly, I'm about to prophesy, because there are things that are going to happen in the coming months, in the coming years, and this generation is going to have to know that in order for me to operate in miracles, signs, and wonders, it's not going to be how I dress, it's not going to be how I look, it's not going to be my past, it's going to be, do I know who I serve? Amen. Do I know who I serve? You see, when you know who you serve, you know who you are, when you know who you are, you know how you walk, you know how you talk. When you know, listen, listen, Everything in your life, I don't care what it is, everything in your life, I want you to go back to your belief system. Everything in your life is based on what you believe. It's based on what you believe. And I believe that Ready Church is a church that was meant to prepare people to believe right. Because when you believe right, you'll live right. The problem is we've been trying to make people live right, but they ain't I can try to make you live right, but if you don't believe right, you ain't going to live right. I can change your behavior all I want to until you believe that you're righteous, until you believe that you're holy, not by your self-effort, not by anything you do, not by anything you read, not by anything you give, not where you go, not who you hang out with, until you believe that you are holy, righteous, saved, sanctified by the blood of Jesus alone.
the gospel of the kingdom. I love that. He went into their cities. It didn't say Jesus went to a stage. It didn't say Jesus went to an arena. It didn't say Jesus tried to find a platform. He went to the cities. He went to the villages. Can I ask you a question? Are you able to function in your anointing even when you don't get attention? Because we live in a generation to where if there's no camera, will you pray? If you won't get a heart for it, will you lay hands? If you don't get a light for it, will you cast out a devil? Listen to me. In this generation, we're going to have to learn something. That harvest is produced by the seeds that are sown in silence. You never see a farmer planting, but most likely you'll see the harvest. Can't, are, are you able to sow and you won't get the praise for what you sow? Are, are, you, are you able to sow you won't get an applause for it. But somebody's life is blessed because of what you sow. I, I love this about Jesus because he was just going around, going about, watch me, and he was healing every sickness, healing every disease. I love this because we, we have people who were content to buy in Christ and say, where are the miracles? Where are the signs? Where are the wonders? This is why I wanted to make sure and I told everybody, don't leave until you feel the presence of God changing something in your body. Because God is a healer. But the problem is, we always talk about we need to see revival. Can I help you? Revival will move when you do. Why we always wait to come to church to see this type of stuff happen? This, this stuff's supposed to happen in the mall. This stuff's supposed to happen in your family. This stuff's supposed to happen on your job. You, you know, and here's the thing. You ain't got to be like super deep with it. If somebody got a headache, you can literally lay your hands on them and say, well, I'm praying for you. God bless you. May the spirit of the Lord heal you right now. In it, in it. Yeah, yeah. We always think it got to be some deep show. Because for some reason, we think authority is a tone of voice. Authority is a position. I can say, come out in the name of Jesus. I don't have to raise my voice. It's the name every demon got to submit to. I'm sorry, y'all. I know we don't talk about devils in this generation. I know we only, I know we only see demons in horror movies. But, but, but even though devils are real, I got authority over them. Not because of me, because of Jesus who lives on the inside of me. The power of God is not based on the level of reading. It's not based on how long you've been saved. The name of Jesus. I don't care if you just popped a molly and you got saved. I don't care if you came off the street and got saved. The moment you get saved, you got to take access to Jesus that I got. Yeah, I'm about, to, I'm about to mess up religion today. I'm about to mess it up. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what religion you was in before. As soon as you come, as soon as you call in the name of Jesus, everything in your life has to shift. It's at the name. It's at that name. And at that name, demons were coming out. Healings was happening. And then, you know, watch, watch, watch verse 36. But, but when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute, LeBron. Jesus was going into the city and the villages. Where did the multitudes come from? He was going to people's homes. He was going into the neighborhoods. Where did the multitudes come from? Because here's the thing, Julie. When people are excited, they can't keep their mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Amen. You ever been to a restaurant, and that restaurant was banging, and you couldn't wait to get on Facebook? <laughs> or if that restaurant was trash, you couldn't wait to get on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> Either way, when people are excited about anything, they can't keep their mouth shut. I wonder do people know that you go to Ready Church? I wonder do people know, hey, there's this place, even though church gets a bad rap, there's this place you can really get prayed for. There's this place where you can really get healed. There's this place that even if you don't believe in Jesus, you can really receive a hug. Because the mantra of our church is this, you can belong even if you don't believe. But if you keep on coming, sooner or later, you will believe. It, it, it ain't my, let me be very clear, it ain't my job to change you. Every time I get up here, I ain't trying to change you. I'm here to teach the gospel. The gospel can do things I can't. So, so Jesus, he had, this, he had this compassion. And the Bible says he moved with compassion, Drew, because compassion just doesn't move you emotionally. It will move you physically. Compassion will cause you to do some things. Compassion will cause you to get up out of your seat. Compassion will cause you to move and become comfortable. Compassion will cause you to do things. And then watch me. He noticed that these people were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. There is a community that you go to every day, and it's like sheep without a shepherd. I see it every week. 
and, I, and, I, and, I, and, and, and I might be talking to y'all, but I'm interceding in my head because I see a bunch of sheep. And, and, and they have no shepherd. And they have no shepherd. When, when, when you go to the mall, I want you to change your perspective. I want you to walk into the mall, and I want you to start thinking, I wonder if they have a shepherd. I ain't talking about me, I'm talking about Jesus. I, look, look, I, I, every time somebody like passes, whether it be a celebrity or somebody like, I don't know well. I always do this. I wonder if they know Jesus. I don't ever assume because of their music. I don't care about none of that. I, I wonder if anybody preach that gospel to them. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. It's just how I'm wired. Do, do they know Jesus? And, and then watch me. Watch me. Like sheep having no shepherd. And then Jesus, in verse 37, I'm wrapping it up. This is the most powerful thing, y'all. Jesus said, oh my God, the harvest is plenty. What Jesus was saying was the harvest is a problem. You know what the problem is? The labels. Isn't it powerful? Watch the next verse. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Here's the thing, Drew. Here's the thing that's just not making sense to me. Jesus, you can call fish the verse Peter meant, but you can't call it what? Just think about it for a moment. Lazarus, come forth! He got up. He got up. But why he call him labor? Hmm. You might think about this. Because listen, remember I told you the Holy Spirit is a gentleman? The Lord will never impose his will on you. I'm trying to teach you something today. The Lord will never impose his will on you. He can move on your heart. But you gotta be obedient. Because the, the Lord will never usurp his authority into your will. Let me be clear, let me be clear, let me be clear, let me break it down for you. Because his will in eternity has to match your decision in time. My God, today you gotta hear what I'm telling you. It is the will of God that every man on the earth be saved. But he's not going to impose his salvation on people who don't want it. Your decision in time has to catch up with his decision in eternity. The blood has already saved everybody, but you got to choose it. If he, if he has already created the harvest, he needs the labels to work that harvest. And on today, that's where I want to land. Give me five minutes, I'm going to preach this and we're going to go home. Because here's the thing about Ready Church. Ready Church does not like harvest. Ready Church, we don't like ideas. I'm going to be honest with you. Because 
like to my family. I love y'all. I do. I love you. But I've seen too many pastors die prematurely, die early, because they gave their body, they gave their time, they gave their mind, they gave their life, only to be disappointed because when they needed help, people didn't show up. And I'm asking you today the same thing. The harvest is plenty. And let me be clear, I'm a servant too. We live in a generation that social media has fooled us. What we think is a pastor is really just an influencer. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be rude. But, but a pastor is somebody who labors with you. They with you. They in the trenches with you. Now you might have a preacher, but that don't mean he your pastor. Let me make sure. I don't care. If you live in Charlotte, PD Jakes ain't your pastor. That's your preacher. If you live in Charlotte, North Carolina, Mike Todd ain't your pastor. That's your preacher. I love him. I love him. I love him. Listen, Joseph Prince is my preacher. That ain't my pastor. A pastor is somebody who labors amongst the sheep. They put you in the sheep. They put you in the trenches. That's what a pastor is. I love my time. Keep supporting them. Keep giving to his ministry. Keep going to his conferences. But can you call him? You see, you see, you see my family, they attend Victory Christian Center because Pastor Gould was their pastor. Robin Gould was their pastor. Robin Gould labored with them. He was there for them. He was there for me, too. That's why they're there. That's what it is. There are people here, if I labor with you, if I've been there for you, and you call me your pastor, as your pastor today, I'm asking you, the harvest is plenty. I need help. I help. Well, Pastor Canaan, how can I help you? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> there are three ways. Because, let me be very clear, in the past, we haven't done membership because I just didn't think it was effective. But 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 we're getting ready to start, and I'm about to take you through this in literally two minutes. If you would like to partner with Ready Church, all you got to do three things. This is what a partner looks like at Ready Church. Number one, we serve the kingdom. You see, ministry is service; it's not just preaching. Ministry is service; it's not just being seen. Ministry, listen, listen, listen. One thing I had to learn early. A lot of times, people, when it comes to ministry, they love to grab the mic, but they don't want to stack chairs. Yeah. You see, the older I get, I really thank God for Pastor Robin Gould. Because what he did, he put me in the office. He made me shred papers. He made me pick up uh, 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 printer cartridges. He made me get coffee. He made me get all that. Because he was teaching me something. If you can be faithful in the small, you'll know what to do when you get large. You see, I, I, need, I need people, I need people, you might not preach, but you're anointed to be at the door. Let me tell you something, the most important people in the ministry ain't always the pastor, it's the greeters. The people meet the greeters way before they meet me. I need more greeters. Listen, as the harvest expands, I need more people in the children's department. I need, listen, as our ministry grows, I need more people on the praise team. Don't you need more people in the media ministry? Don't you need more people in the audio ministry? We need help! Amen. What did Kevin Hart say? Help me! Help me! Help me! Help me! Listen, I, listen, I have no problem. I have no problem dating like Keith Sweat to get whatever I need. I need, I need help! I need help! Serve the kingdom. Because here's the thing. As it grows, watch me, as it grows, then we'll have more people serving the kingdom. And we'll have more people serving the kingdom. And if we're all serving together, then we can all carry the load together. Yeah. Right? And then watch me. Number two, here we go. Not only do we serve the kingdom, we seek others to bring in the kingdom. How many people do you know that don't have a church and they need a church? They, they, they really need a church. Like, like, they really need a hug. They really need comfort. I'm not against online ministry. We, we, we drop 
service every Tuesday. But like I said, there is something about people when you get connected. There's somebody that you can call, just somebody that can pray with you, somebody that can labor with you. This year, we're going to start small groups. Hold me accountable to that. Hold me accountable to that. We're going to start small groups because watch me. As the church grows, you're going to need a community around you to love you, to pour into you, to pray for you. But 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 we gotta we gotta seek others to bring into the kingdom. And here's the last one. See, we I've always said this one time about the last one. Pray for me, okay? So you gotta serve the kingdom, seek others to bring into the kingdom, and we gotta sow into the kingdom. Thank you for the amen. That's what I'm talking about. Because because here's the thing, I'm not even gonna get spiritual with you because I've already taught you, and I'm not teaching again. I've taught you the principles of sowing. I told you that, but listen to me. But in order to multiply, in order to grow, in order to do the things we need to do, it takes money. Yeah. I'm going to just keep it a buck with you. I ain't even going to pacify around a miracle. It takes money. The gospel is free, but church ain't. <laughs> and people have had the audacity, Greg. I serve with my time.
iamready.church slash connect. iamready.church slash connect. Well, well, Pastor Candy, you, 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 want me to, you want me to give into this ministry. You want me to sow into this church. You ain't even told me where we're going. I'm glad you asked me. You asked me good questions today. Dream with me for a moment. We'll take what the Lord has shown me. Now, if you don't care about what I'm about to tell you, you have permission to go to Instagram and just scroll. Okay? But for the people, the people who believe in this mission, vision, and what God is doing, sat being with you. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. When people build churches, after they build the building, Lauren, they put their name out front. What do they do with it during the week? Say again? Nothing. We build these buildings, we build these spaces, beautiful churches, but Monday through Saturday is only used for the church. What if, what if, what if there was a building, a ministry, or community center where people could serve God on Sunday, but then the building could serve the people Monday through Who cares? 
with other businesses and organizations to make it happen. Like, 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 like Elliot, just, just think, just think of a place to where young people, what if we have like a midnight basketball experience where we sent out a bus into the community and we picked up kids who were on the street and we fed them and we let them play basketball and then we make sure they got back home? Because you know what the problem with Charlotte is? We will complain about the crime rate, but then take away everything for our children. You close parks, you close the music program, you take away JV program, what they gonna do? Mama work at nighttime, daddy ain't home, what you think they gonna do? I'm talking about doing ministry that's not just in here. I'm talking about serving the heart. And I don't care if you think I'm crazy. But here's the thing, what G, what we call crazy, Jesus called normal. Blind eye, open, that's crazy, but that's normal. Demons coming out of people, that's crazy, but that's normal. That's normal for the kingdom. That's normal. So that's what we're giving to all year long. Road to the ready center. 